When we talk about radical equations, we're referring to equations that have radicals in them. For example, a square root or a cube root. Sometimes, however, the radical part is a little less obvious. For example, an equation with a fractional exponent, like 2x to the 1 half power plus 3 equals 5, would also qualify as a radical equation. And solving this kind of equation is going to take a slightly different approach. For this class of equations, we often won't be able to just raise both sides to a power. That method really only works well when there's either only one radical in the equation or the radical part is a square root. To solve equations like the one in the example here, we're going to need a different method. So let's start by looking at this example. Now the key features that I want you to notice are in the exponents. First, notice that the denominators are all 3. And with the numerators, we have 2, 1, and 0, or no exponent. And I want you to compare this to a quadratic equation. To solve this equation, I'm going to make a substitution that eliminates the denominators of the exponents and at the same time leaves me with a quadratic equation. Now, to do that, I'm going to start by defining a new variable, u, which I'm going to define to be equal to x to the one-third. And this is based on the middle term here in the original equation. Now look at how this is going to simplify things. First, I'll replace the x to the one-third in the middle with u. Remember that to simplify an exponent to an exponent, you multiply the exponents together. So I can think of this x to the two-thirds as being x to the one-third squared. So now I can replace this x to the one-third with u. Now look at what that's done to my equation. It went from being a complex equation with fractional exponents to being just a regular quadratic equation, which I can solve by factoring. Now that I've factored the, the equation, the expression on the left-hand side, I can get its solutions by setting the factors equal to zero and solving those smaller equations. Doing that gives me u equals 2 and u equals 1. Now, we still have one step left to go. We have values for u, but the question asked us to solve for x. So to go from u back to x, I'm just going to use this equation. If I substitute 1 for u, I get x to the 1 third equals 1. Or if I raise both sides to the third power, x equals 1 to the third power, which is just 1. And now I'll do the same thing with 2. If I replace the u with 2, I get 2 equals x to the 1 third. And again, I'll cube both sides. And this gives me x equals 8. So x equals 1 or 8 are my two solutions. All right, so let's take a step back and, and think about this process. First, I looked at the original equation and realized that it had some similarities to a quadratic equation. 
Then I came up with a substitution that I could use to eliminate the fractional exponents, leaving me with just a quadratic equation. Once I solved my modified equation, I went back and used those solutions to get the values of x. On this slide, I have another example. So why don't you pause the presentation, see if you can solve this one on your own, then start the video again and compare your results with mine. So if you look at this equation, you'll see that it has those same similarities to a quadratic equation. The exponents have in their numerators 2, 1, and 0, or no exponent. Also, the denominators are all the same. So I'm going to try to use the same approach here. I'm going to start by letting u equal x to the 1 fifth, basing that on the middle term. And if I make that substitution, the equation becomes 2u squared minus 5u minus 12 equals 0, which is just a quadratic equation. Now I can factor this and set those factors equal to 0. And if I solve these two equations, I get u equals negative 3 halves and u equals 4. Now I can go back and get the values of x by going back to my substitution equation here. If I replace u with negative 3 halves, then raise both sides to the fifth power, I get x equals a negative 243 eighths. And if I replace u with 4 and raise both sides to the fifth power, I get x equals 1024. So those are my those are my final answers. X equals negative two hundred and forty three eighths and one thousand twenty four.